Oh, don't you gotta count that like while it is recording? Yeah, everything's recording. Oh, the camera's kind of on. There. See how it's still going? Uh huh. It's working. Yeah. Cool. Isn't that fun? Move your face so I can see you. Which way? There. No, other way. Other way. No, you. You're going in every portion except the right one. This one. This there one? you go. Yeah. I feel like I. Feel like I'm really far away. You can be far. Away. Uh, Rogan's face set across like that far, like as far as the table. You know. That works. But um, our only formal part of the interview. Well, it's not an interview, but <laughs> I have to. I have to be really fake right here. John, what's up, man? What's up? Okay, that's it. <laughs> so I heard this the other day. Actually, no, I heard them. Um, do you remember on like Junkcast? I've been wanting to ask you about this for a while, but I was going to save it for this. Okay. Um, I don't even need this. Um, they found a way to reverse aging in humans. I mean, they talk about it all the time. Yeah. Who knows if it's actually real? That's embarrassing. Um, no, but they well, they found how to reverse aging in lab rats by putting like the blood of younger rats into the old oh, ones. Oh yeah, no, I've done that. Okay, so well, that's the whole conspiracy is that um, Hillary Clinton that's and what a lot all of those people, people are injecting themselves with baby blood. Mm -hmm. Well, remember that's Alex only, Jones would always talk about yeah. Jones would always talk about um. I thought it was like eighteen year old baby blood. It could be it could be any blood younger than them actually and it'll work. <laughs> if if you believe that makes sense, doesn't it? If you believe in reverse aging. No, if you believe in the fact that like if younger blood makes you yeah. more virile than any blood younger than you. So you're like eleven oh, sure. you're like eleven than me, I think. Or no, you're like ten months younger than me. So if I took your blood and put it inside of me, you that would help. That would be better. Technically, yeah. Yes. I mean, it, well, on that logic, I think the the greater the range. So, if... oh, cool. That's a lot of people, dude. <laughs> um, but so go. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, so yeah. I think, like, you know, if there's what eleven months, you said ten months, something like that. The greater That's... the range, the benefit. The yeah, the effects. Mm -hmm. So by that effect, they did it in rats, and like you know how like they proved it that yes. And the the chain of like testing goes from like rat to uh, pig. No, it goes from several pig. different sure. because pig hearts are like super similar to humans' hearts. It's always you can put a pig heart in people. I don't uh, know yeah. who did it, but Rockstar did it, and I it wasn't Ozzy. I think it was Ronnie James Dio. Uh -huh. You ever heard of him? He sings a really cool song called "Rainbow in the Dark." Anyway, right. it was like that rain. And he was, oh, the, oh. yes. No, you you have um, oh God, what was it? Ozzy's band before he went solo. Um, Black Sabbath. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, what's up, Harley? Man, I've been good. Just you know, kind of doing my thing. I answer live comments on here. Um, oh, dude, before I forget, I have to for this. Yeah, we're taking selfies live on air. Get over it. Oh and my God. That's all you need. I gotta and stick then, my tongue out for every selfie. No, you don't. It's just like a... No, you don't. So my question is, they figured it out in humans. They've done it successfully. Now, remember the whole thing about stem cells? Oh, yeah. you want I got a good story about that. I'll ask you this question. Stem cells, the act of stem cells is how they replace tissue. Or like, if you have like cancer... Or no, how this how did stem cells work? Didn't they replace like the the missing what you needed? I think it's because they, it's they like, were like a blank cell. Cellular yes, tissue or it something. was a blank cell, yes. Yeah. So by that effect, this is my question. If they could mix that somehow with the human blood, the new baby blood or whatever, young blood, uh -huh. and then mix that in to the stem cells so they could just keep you living forever. So, like, eventually, if, like, I'm 80 and all of a sudden my skin became, like, a 20-year-old again. Mm -hmm. That'd be crazy. The only thing that would have a problem with that is, like, your brain. Your brain, brain is still aging. Yeah. However, 
if they replace brain with the stem cells that means you have a new brain would your memories be gone or would you have the memories of the person that is replacing the i don't know you know what i'm saying well, that's a, i think the what you're talking about stem cells is just like that the whole young blood that you're thing but like stem cells is kind of like the actual life thing of like what young blood people are trying to accomplish because there's so many reports of people i read about them regrowing teeth even you know yeah really did you watch that podcast with mel gibson joe Rogan gibson and yeah and he was talking about his mel gibson's dad was like 90 and he was like on his way he's like his kidneys are failing like he's got like months left Mm -hmm. so he hears about these stem cells mel gibson does he gets search like gives them to the doctor doctor's like well what do you gotta lose right so then he takes you know flies his dad down in private panama where this doctor is and it's just he's 10 years later and he's better he's doing better 10 years later than he was when he was 90. yeah i did see that one it was pretty cool um it kind of scared me though like like what if i need something like that you know 50 60 years down the road and it's we'll not super accessible yeah you got to be able to go out of the country it's illegal in was well not wisconsin it's illegal in most in states. Of, yeah most most treatments there's some treatments that but i mean the view that they allow doctors have taken that and kind of just interpreted it and they say you're using it for joint pain or something i think that's what they use it for like knees or i don't know joints. stem cells of the marijuana of the medical field it's like it is it is john mulaney's got a great bit where the the government just became like cool parents about marijuana and they're like take a little try it. we would rather yeah we would rather you do it here than anywhere else blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. but um yeah i just no i just wanted to open with that well my grandpa <laughs> he he just went down for treatment for stem cells yeah down like the panama down to panama yeah shut up because i watched that podcast and i told him about it so he did i showed him the podcast and then he got the doctor's book, watched the podcast again, and confirmed, okay, like, this is, I think this is real. So this isn't something like he just did on a whim. He, like, actually researched it. And... Yeah, well, he book and did his own research, but it was because of that podcast. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus. he went down, and when, after his treatment, was, like, four days. Like, he had, like, multiple, like, injections a day, mm -hmm. multiple days, and he came back. When I talked to him on the phone for the first time, I could instantly, well, his voice was stronger. That's so cool, though. That's really good that he got that. He didn't just wait around and he didn't go yeah. through like the American doing it because I honestly think that America's doctors, I'm just going to say this, this is going to sound really wacky, but if doctors are trying to kill us. <laughs> well, I don't think it's if, intentional. Well, if you, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. Like, how can every doctor could just have the same view or the same practice? Like, one doctor's going to be like, hey, I got to expose this. Sure. And then maybe they, I feel like a lot of doctors are in denial right now. It's just like, we've gone down this one alley of like uh, treating symptoms, symptoms, symptoms. And it's just like a, a lot of the, it's just that the medication is causing more problems than the, the problem itself, you know? So they get you to come back though. That's the, where the money is. It's not on the cure comeback. It's on the comfort. That's the whole opiate epidemic is because we're trying to treat things with the symptoms. So we're just using these pain meds to like just cover up whatever it is. Proper do with the causes. Do you think that do you, um, is addiction a disease or is it? A... I think what's your what's well, your opinion on it careful because you could be wrong this ease it's 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 this ease it's ease but it's like this so it's like the opposite or whatever that prefix means so like there's a lot of things that we like think of diseases right but it's because of the environment because of toxicity i just read the headline i even clicked into the article what they were saying that they've um seen the toxicity from pollution cause a significant reduction in iq in reading math scores I'm like i don't know if that's true or not i don't know if it's because true, los it's angeles has the worst pollution on i think in the united states mm -hmm. um that's even over new york city they have the worst one of the worst pollutions in the united states if not the worst and i'm pretty sure the worst in the world oh yeah. it has to be uh and then if that's true 
how come like all the smartest people are in LA? How come all this shit is coming out of China? You know, I, I'm just saying, like, I'm sure it that ha- your view of merit, like that, does cause that. Well, this is something that I read. Yeah. Um, I was gonna make a that. video for this. My view is on the addiction versus the choice. Um, the one thing I just want to say is like this whole view mm-hmm. on how if you've never gone through it, you can't speak on it. Fuck that. Uh, everyone's entitled their opinion, and you can decide later if it's right or wrong. But you can't stop speaking on it. You know what I'm saying? That's freedom of speech, yeah. Yeah. Um, It's messed up in other places. You know, like, um, if I was supposed to start talking about abortion, Mm -hmm. and I don't experience that, it's like me to talk about. But I'm still a person. I can still talk about it. But you can sit there and go, holy fucking wrong. But you have to listen to me. You don't have to do what I say, but you have to listen to me. So my view is that the... a disease is something acquired through, I was going to look it up, but I don't want to walk over there. <laughs> um, it's something you acquire through, what was the word, like through the air, through, like somehow into your, Anything in your environment. Yes. So, I mean, I think addiction to all like the alcohols in your environment at some point where you, I mean, that first initial choice to drink or not, or if it's a cigarette, like there's a choice. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a reflection of your environment. So I guess I feel like it's yin yang. You can't say one way or the other. It's yeah. Um, that's kind of where I was going to go with it. Um, it's a yeah. choice, but whether we have free will or not, a lot of people say we do. A lot of people say we don't. It's like, how deep you want to go with this? But... Well, we can go deep. We just started. Um, we, <laughs> My, my is, uh, I had someone say to me once who was a heroin addict that we're addicted to it because of how bad our reality is. It's an escape. Yeah. Right. But not everyone does it. So my thing is, um, like people know that I love soda. Like that's just who I am. Like I love soda. I'm always got a Mountain Dew in my hand, but I cannot tell people I've hung out with a lot all the time that have sat next to me, see me drinking this, even had it, and you're like, ugh, and they throw it away. Yeah. So by that, like, everybody's different. We're all creatures we, of habit. So I guess, uh, like, you have the choice to begin these habits, but one thing, they kind of just self perpetuate. But is that a disease? A disease to have a habit or to even give into a habit? I think so. I think that's just a human choice. I guess there's multiple ways to use the word disease, too. I mean, like, like, are we talking in a medical sense? Or are we talking in an emotional sense? That's what I was going to get into is the definition of disease. So there are multiple definitions well, of it. And then Portugal, the thing is, I got to get this out before sorry. I forget. I think since, um, oh, damn it. Now I'm thinking about Portugal. I, why'd you say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the reason that people are starting to turn to opiates is i think it's just of how many it that's it's by that i think it's an epidemic an epidemic is like the bird flu if that was even real there were like um crickets like in the 30s and the 40s or smallpox or measles so it's one of those that we came up with an immunity for or a cure whatever you want to call it polio polio epidemic like it's Swiss nation and now opiates is switched across the epidemic of the na- it's Swiss nation. But you make the choice to push it in you. However, however, when, why, if it's just sweeping the nation, is that just a way of what is happening there? Is that um, people making the choice to do based on if the government lied to us about marijuana and how bad it was for oh, I don't think well, it's maybe bad. this shit's not that bad. I think and they start fucking putting that shit in there because they think it's a lie. Or, or I found out this, maybe people are so fucking stupid that they think they can like, survive it or some shit. Or, I mean, you can survive heroin, but like it's so good. It feels so good getting in you. Or maybe their parents didn't hit them and teach them because... Some of this shit will kill you. 
maybe not marijuana, but other stuff of it will. Or maybe people just don't give a fuck anymore. Maybe they just like die, die. Well, when you're talking about opiates, are you talking about prescribed opiates or are you talking about heroin? Are you separating those two or are you just linked to one? Do you're talking don't about opiates kill you too? They can. I yeah. Can overdose on that. Yeah. I think when you're talking about choice, uh, you got to think about where it starts. A lot of people choose to trust their doctor. So the doctor prescribes the opiates. They say doctor and they get hooked on this stuff. Well, all of a sudden you're going for like five years and the doctor says, cut you off now. You know, but you've been taking this trust in your doctor and you still have pain because of the symptoms, you're not treating the cause. So the pain just continues and the pharmaceutical companies just keep making money. So it's yeah. like, but then you get cut off. Then what do you do? Die of relapse. Turn to heroin. That's what a lot of people do Oh, because they're already caught. You know, you think you hear that do heroin once and you're gone forever. But for a lot of these people, they're already gone before that first hit of heroin. Yeah. They trust, and it starts at something's nine and something so positively intentioned, you know, to trust the but, you're receiving. Yeah, dude. Oh, shit. I never even thought of that. Like the whole, the, oh, hmm. be on your best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they, by the way, they can't see this. They can't see that I'm pointing at things. I okay. I just won't put a. I just won't make a comment about. By the way, that number is not real. That's probably like thirty or forty, maybe even. That's just like it's land. Oh really? So yeah. Um. Well, yeah. We got all these people watching right now. Um. I think. I don't want to. What's up, Travis? Um. I don't. Like, I wanted to ask you who's to blame for this, but I don't think it's blame isn't the right. Follow the money. Bl blame isn't the right choice of action. It's not the sure. right course of action we should do. So it's what, social engineering. Yeah. Yeah. I always like if, if you've watched some of the previous ones I've talked about, like, and we, I talk about something bad. I say, this is the direction the world went in. It's no fault. Mm -hmm. I say that about smartphones. I think a lot of the old, anxiety thing the reason that we all are all anxiety on now is i'm not though i never get anxiety <laughs> no i don't i get lucky i got super lucky i got i either that or i learned how to deal with it okay. i just keep telling myself like this isn't as bad as you think mm -hmm. and it really it really um <laughs> hey mckenna i shout out everybody travis don't feel special i'm just <laughs> kidding dude i love you i hope your drone is doing better doing well he let me fly his drone for a little bit. It was pretty cool, actually. It was a little like gyrocopter or whatever, but it was Drones one of those like those big things. Yeah. Um, shit. Well, uh, something important. Why people choose? <laughs> oh, uh, the action, the anything. I think like I don't think human brains are designed to take so much of this shit all the time. Like their Facebook, Instagram, like it's so much, and it's breaking down our brains. And I said, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's nothing to blame. It's just that how it went. That's the direction the world went in. Is that we got these phones. We went off the deep end with it. Oh yeah. Um, and we didn't. We never realized that. Uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> I also just woke up an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh. I think our brains just aren't designed to handle all that. It's just, I think our next couple of is are coming that they'll be able to handle it, but like not us. Definitely. You look just, I mean, there's already a generation below millennials are calling generation and Z. Like, isn't that what came, didn't that come out already? Generation X and Y. Okay. Yeah, but no, it's generation Z. I'm pretty sure. X is I think that's X the aren't our parents. No. Yeah, X is what came after our parents. But yeah, I don't know. The X is I know X are the forty year olds right now. The greatest generation that went through the depression. I think then the World War Two. And then the baby boomer, boomers came out of World War Two. coming home. Mm -hmm. I think Generation X came after that. I yes. feel like there's something between Generation Generation Y. I can't remember. What's Y? I feel like that's a maybe maybe that's like a sub category. I, I think I think why, but we got lumped in with millennials. I think well, there's the difference between like age and location. I mean, like maybe millennial, but by the fact that I can still remember dial-up tone and 
<laughs> Thank you for joining, Mr. Thiesfeld. I'm still going to call him Mr. because that's who he is. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to high school. Yeah, you. that's right. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Sorry to cut you off. I forgot now. I'm sorry. Well, let's move on. Video games. <laughs> um, uh, the generation that... I, yeah, I think we just got lumped in with millennials. I had when people call you millennial. Do you get upset about that? Well, it depends in what context. Because hey, a lot Carol. of times they're like, oh, millennials don't want to work and do anything. It's just like, okay. Mm. Yeah. I, I think I, we're I, just a little bit disenfranchised. I too brush with the it off. I, I brush it off. Sorry. That's so embarrassing, dude. <laughs> Um, generation Y is millennials. She's probably right. Um, generation I, Z, like they are just like constantly, like they'll drop a pin. You ask me to drop a pin, I'm like, first and second off, no, I don't want to let people know where my location is. But like, they, <laughs> there's they're, just, a, they're doing that already. It's so much easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a, the next group ahead of us is just so more advanced. I've already found myself getting frustrated at my phone. Like, yeah. Someone voice called me once and the option to hang up was green. So I started tapping on it. And I'm like, okay, I, I can't, I can't. And then I started shaking my phone. I was like, get off my screen. <laughs> Why is that going to do anything? Yeah. Someone saw me do it. You're like, you're such a fucking dad. Yeah. Why are you shaking? And then think about like, what's the next generation going to be like? They talk about privacy. Like at a certain point, the generation will be like, oh, there is no privacy because we're going to be doing everything like text mom, send her, blah, blah, blah. Like, and you just assume that it's done in your phone. You're not even like lifting up your wrist or anything. You just like say it, it does it, you know, but it's always listening. So there has to be this removal of privacy. And what if privacy is something you'll have to pay for? It's what if privacy is going to be a luxury someday? I think it is. Well, cause think of like the, and like these Google homes or whatever that's coming out. They're coming out and like, there's a lot of generations, like the older generation seems to really love that. Mm -hmm. um but like hands-free it's ease of friction like it's easier to just like do your voice and anything that's easier to do it's convenient there's less friction and it's just makes it's the way that people are going to go so i think that's going to be the next thing have you been watching gay lately that's where i got it from yeah. less friction he always talks about reducing friction i saw the video of him on ugh, i still have but uh his his video uh, where there's a purse off of um alexa have you seen that he, he just says, this is ease of friction. This is the easiest we've ever been able to buy stuff. He goes, Alexa, buy my per buy a purse for my wife. Here's, oh. here's something that your wife would like. He says, goes, buy that D&G clutch, blah, 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 whatever. And oh. all of a sudden it was on way to his way to his house. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, I like ease of friction. But that's like, such a good term. I mean, when he said that, it just like rang. I'm like, that's, that's social engineering because that's what people do it's the path of least resistance you've heard that term before too you know it's oh, the yeah. same same idea yeah um i i'm not against new technology but i'm finding myself like getting into technology so many years later than it needs to be like yeah i didn't know screening was a thing until like 2015 <laughs> and apparently that was old back then I guess the, like screen you just push a button and any smart device like your phone will up like on a screen or tv like, oh, I, get, I do that now on my tv I don't know do i've that. done it before it's really, really cool yeah well i have a my oh TV's you mean like like the now. chromecast kind of thing yeah but it's it, there's no connection at all there's nothing in the t because my tv is oh, to the internet now yeah no I, and i can just push a button on my phone and it sends my screen to the it was the weirdest thing like by signal at my at my last Christmas with my parents phone just could like start and stop Pandora on their device because Ugh. it was connected to the internet. And that was the only, I was, it was so weirded out by that. It just like knew I didn't have to connect to anything. My phone just, oh, no. it just opened up and said, Hey, do you that's, that's another thing. Like the, the, not the thing of free will, but like the, the, um, of choice or like the, um, elimination of choice. You don't have a choice going on your device. Oh, first, yeah. the first day I plugged in that full TV, uh, I was playing Dark Souls, which you cannot pause. You cannot pause Souls. Okay. And I'm um, fighting some. I wanna sub like, I want to subscribe to YouTube. And it's like or a dollar to a month. Or like, yeah. Ay, that's weird. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of 
What's the reaction on that? Well, that's what they're used. Has and it I always think, been like that? I no, it couldn't have been like because an app just, was to like. I just remember seeing the comparison between United States internet access and Europe's internet access, and I was surprised. So it's weird. It's the end of that story. <laughs> Fuck Europe, dude. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I've nothing against Europe. I was watching. You ever watch show Big? Is that Netflix? That's cartoons. Yeah. Cartoon, yeah. I was watching it the other day, and um, the first period, and they showed like everything. And I was, I was watching. Uh, no, I was, I was. There's this part where like the statue was talking to her. Okay. And her, then her mom was giving her opinions on it, and then the hormone monster came out and like started talking to her, which is like her spirit animal or whatever. And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Uh." The Statue of Liberty, my mom were talking to me, and then she cuts her off and goes, The French are full of shit, and your mom's a woman into clusting to me. <laughs> I the French are full of shit, and your mom's a woman into decline. What is that show on Netflix started by the Futurama people? Disenchantment. Absolutely. No. It's all right. It feels like what I want I'd like to watch it, but I've like people are like, oh, the Simpsons should have ended 20 years. <laughs> and I, I say it should have ended 10 years ago. And then I started saying well, Futurama got canceled three times and they kept reviving it. So, like, it's just what what's the point want. of that? As long as it's making money, that's what they're... That's yeah, no, I, I, I get that. Like, Matt, Gr- the creator, like, I'm like, how much story do you have to tell? And it kept going directions where, like, Fry wouldn't even matter. And then, um, all of a sudden, like, oh, the central character, Leela, and then, like, all the central character was Bender and Fry and Leela didn't matter. And then the, at last episode, I guess they do end up together. Do they? I don't remember anymore. Yeah, I read a summary of it. Like, I guess um they end up together, but then they go back in time where they first met, but they also have their brains from the past, so they already do love each other. They have all this time to... They have more time to just be there, I guess. So, mm-hmm. like... Yeah, I just I just finished watching <clears throat> The Office again. I watched it twice. So. I just finished Brooklyn Nine Nine yesterday. Watched this episode. It's not finished. So they're making, <clears throat> a, new, making a new season. Because yeah, I'm glad apparently, picked it up. Apparently, die anymore. Nope, not with the internet. If there's a fan, they're vocal. It's not the show. Kind of bullshit because uh, why can't something just die? Why can't something be the end? Why can't the book shut? Like they're reviving the office. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Really? And Steve Carell is not doing it. Good for him for saying no. Because yeah. when he left the show and went downhill, it went I've heard the three opposite. Seasons. Some people there's two seasons without him, and I've actually heard people say that's the reasons. They do stand on their own. I've watched them. This is fine without him. Mm. He was a very good character. No, I don't think that. I think it fell apart. Sure. I love Andy Bernard. I definitely it's my favorite though. My Andy. You love me uh, Andy's my fab's all time favorite. Rick to do. Rick to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when Dwight goes to office and he's imitating him. There's an episode where Andy, well, Andy's gone for like three months, but and he goes in and he goes, Hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Andy Dwyer, I think his last name is. Hey, Mr. Dwyer, can you sign this for me? He goes, Thing, Mr. Shroot, you are the best salesman in the world. Rick to do, Rick to do. And he's like signing it in his desk and his own, like forging his. <laughs> and he does that every time he makes a sale. So he's in there multiple times a day. <laughs> That's a good show. That's the next <laughs> Seinfeld. That's like the generational show. That's like the next SpongeBob or something. Mm-hmm. I've never seen an episode of SpongeBob. Never. Never watched an episode. One. Do you know who Mr. Krabs is on that show? Yeah. There's a little bit of trivia for you getting into the camera, breaking the fourth wall. His name, name is Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs. The the voice of Mr. Krabs. You ready for this? The movie Shawshank Redemption? Yeah. You know that head prison guard that's a dick to everybody? No. Okay. Last time I watched that movie was... Yeah, show me a picture. Oh, I'll show you it. No, all I can hear Freeman's sweet, beautiful no. voice. I always call, I can't even think of Morgan Freeman's name, so I just call him Shawshank. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Shawshank, the black guy, the narrator. The uh, narrator. Um, yeah, <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Just call him Shawshank. Um, oh, God. Shawshank. Prune guard. 
He's the head prison guard, and I know the actor's name. It's this guy. Remember him? Kind of. I'd have to rewatch. His it. name is Clancy, and that's the voice. That is the voice of Mr. Abs. <laughs> so for all you people watching who care about SpongeBob and know Shawshank Redemption, the head prison guard is the voice of Mr. Krabs. Apparently, and he does a ton of video game voices too. Always one of those. Yeah. Career. Well, one of the people from NSYNC went on to be Chip Nightingale or something. Fairly odd parents. He's one of the voices Chip in Trap. Betcha. I don't know, but he <laughs> Chris Kirkpatrick from the NSYNC went on to be a voice in a bunch of Disney that's good for him. I mean, yeah. he's doing something instead of, you know, trying to revive his career. Apparently, SpongeBob just got renewed for another season. Good. I the show's been going for like 20 years or something. Something like that. It's crazy. Good. I don't know if they make a new season every year, but they're doing it. I'm fine with it. I just, I've never watched it, but. You've really never watched it? I've before? never seen a single episode. That's crazy. Oh. Huh? Sorry. No, that's. <laughs> you're, um, you had other things. Yeah. Um, so, I haven't talked to you for a year. No? Yeah. That seems weird. We knew it, but Chip Skylark, didn't I just say that? There, there. Or Gale? Chip oh, Skylark, I, I said it weird. wrong. I said it wrong. Chip Skylark. There you go. Yeah, that's one of the voices of NSYNC. Um, We've talked a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. Call your old friends up. Tell them you miss them, even if you don't talk to them anymore. You know, you never know what could happen. You've always been really good at that. I oh, the, you you don't know how many people have told me to fuck off. Really? Yeah. Uh, I talked to a friend of mine a couple of months back that was really good friends with a couple of years ago, and um, I went longer without talking to him, like two, three years. I tried to get him on here, and he's like, I don't, I don't have anything to do with you. I'm like, dude, it we've it's done like i apologize for everything you I guess if you don't want to forgive me that's fine but like it's he's married now a house like don't you like kind of maybe we could get past everything and he goes no no i don't want to do anything he goes i don't like you and i never have so i'm just gonna oh i can understand wanting things to be different you know so you can stop that from happening again so you don't go another three years after you know <laughs> i guess but totally writing somebody off seems a little bit yeah yeah especially in this day and age like i'm friends with them on i don't get like why that has to be a thing i mean like yeah. i guess i i'm a fan of full of my philosophy is like you can shed skin you be a new you can become a new person like every five years you can be a new person every year. Do you don't have to be a same. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Do it every day. Yeah, I mean, radical change takes months, years, weeks. Like to to wake a different person is something. It's very difficult. And it's. I think it's easier if you don't try to do it. You know what I'm saying? You just do it. If you wake up and conscious try to be different, no. Uh, well, yeah, just, because it requires like, a certain amount of thought. Change comes yeah. with time. Change comes with time, whether you like it or not. But to become a different person, like if you, if tomorrow I woke up and I said, I'm going to buy a bonsai tree and look at five hours a day, how hard would that be to do that tomorrow morning? It's, <laughs> the way I look at it is like the difference between stretch, like but... knowing, knowing and thinking. Like okay, I wake up in the morning, I want to run every morning. Like I've thought about this, this like choice that I made. Choice, right? So I wake up in the morning. I know I got to run. So if I would just like know it and do it, mm -hmm. no problem. I think about it. Then I think about like, what else do I want to do? Like, oh, I just want to lay in bed. I just want to sleep for like 15, 20 more minutes mm -hmm. or whatever. And then because of it, that it instantly gives me like enough time to go, oh, why not to do it? So why not just do it? Just go. And that's just where the change it. comes from. I I just do it. Like to think Nike. Too much. <laughs> just do it. Look <laughs> in the camera. Um, no, I, yeah, I just think like it, that kind of a change over that short amount of time is just like, I don't know. And I think that's where some people fall into a depression. They want to change. And then when they can't do it overnight, 
it, people are like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. You know, they say that you got to do something like three weeks in a row mm. to like create a change. Like to, like we were saying, or like to create a new habit, you have to do it for three weeks before it like starts to saturate. Mm. So like one, one week is not enough. You're excited about Two something. Weeks, you start noticing mm -hmm. it's going to be a habit. And then three is like, this is a new established life. Yeah, real change, real change takes a lot of consistency. Mm -hmm. That's something I've always really struggled with. I always go like, what's that? What's, you know, I keep changing my focus, but you guys focus on the same thing for a long time. Yeah. Really convict yourself to it. Yeah. It's, it's more than anything. I think um, even expecting the change is bad. I think you should just do it because you want instead <laughs> of expect, like, even if you keep it in the back of your head as like, this is a means to an end, like, why am I running every day? Wait, and get in better shape. Don't even think about the end result. You always at the bars. Don't don't think about the result. Just don't just be in the moment. Uh -huh. Be in the moment, Mitch. <laughs> it's like, oh uh, no, what? But then like it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Yeah. yeah. Back we back here. Um there's people coming in here from WLA. Hold on, that's my cousin. Sorry, I thought that was um Rachel Thompson for a second. That's from. Oh yeah. Her, yeah. Oh, There's yeah. Paul Park. Yay. <laughs> uh, should we have a class reunion? That would be <laughs> something. Um, I what I like... wanted to do was like that one day where like we didn't do it. So what do we got to do? We just got to like throw no, up a Facebook page. No, there's more. There's more. Plan what bar we want to go to. No, there's more to it. That requires nine hours of deep focus. So we got to buy stamps, nine hours a day. Lick envelopes. <laughs> yeah. We're sending them. Um, <laughs> buy balloons. Get a giant inflatable. Bouncy house? Yeah. Uh, bo that booze and bouncy houses. I was going to call it booze and bouncies, but that's I think it's a strip club. <laughs> um, what I wanted to do was, uh, uh, first of all, I was going to ask you if there is a Facebook page for our class. So I looked it up and find I don't one. think so. There's one for the class of 08, and there's one class of like 2011 and everything. I found all these. <laughs> but uh oh well. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say um first step is we have to make a page for it and then the step is between you and me cuz I don't have everybody from us on Facebook. Some people won't add me. Okay. Yeah. Do you think if so we made, if you were... between us we'd have all of them like between you and me? Would people use it? It wouldn't be for them to use. It would be for them to get one group. And then I would just put like, oh, sure. hey, this is a class reunion. Um, first of all, does anyone want to do it? Oh, if we set it up now, then it's just there. So then like the next every five or 10 years, you know, you gather everybody up. It's just already in as long as that group is open that everybody's that, there to be. Well, yeah, that. It's, it was more just like, yeah, it was more just to like get a, uh, it was more just to like, uh, everybody in a single lump like one thing and then every time some post i would be like okay who wants to do this i got enough people to do it i would be like okay now we're gonna go through with it and then like a couple weeks later i was gonna do like okay what are we gonna or okay where do you want to do it or what do you want to do okay and then we got to talk about price and we got to talk about like activities and then we got to talk about like travel it it would take a while it wouldn't take a while to get set up but it would take a while to like gather the opinions because there's steps that you have to take in order to get the ball i, I remember that i, I actually remember remember the yeah. day it happened and i was like what i, I was like 15, 14 13 12 mm -hmm. 13 i think so there's a specific video game i bought that day and i can like look at the uh -huh. release date of it and be like oh that's when it happened um I, I didn't feel anything when Reagan died. No. My dad was kind I remember of it was interesting. Yeah, but like the old then you have memories. Like I remember uh, high school and him running against Obama. Yeah, yeah. I voted for him. And um I remember seeing it on the um WLA monster any certain Yeah, um I I heard that. No, but okay, so we can't do that. I was gonna say I'm not gonna I People in my class, 
Dollar ring. I guess everyone can always just do like an after. But I appreciate the uh oh, that's good. Courtney, uh, um they twenty eleven had a cool reunion. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I went. All they did was just go to Coliseum or whatever. Back when it was the annex, the dance floor. Mm-hmm. Now it's an arcade. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I have not been out for Dude, a while. <laughs> this space, this is an invader screen the size of that wall. What? Right there, yeah. And you can you sit in a chair with a gun, you can shoot at them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Where have I been? Wow, that's actually really cool. Uh, not going to the bars. No. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the whole McCain thing, though, like, I remember I was like, I was like, oh, but he had like brain cancer or something. Yeah. I yeah. think he chose to stop treatment. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And he wrote a really good, like, goodbye letter to America. America? Right. To, yeah. Huh. So it was like moving. It was just like, okay, like, I have memories when I was younger. Like, he's okay. It's like when um, Chester died or just, oh, yeah. It was like, whoa. I think straight up i'm not going into the conspiracy theories i think i'm just gonna leave it where it's at <laughs> he, i think chris cornell was murdered too there was this whole thing where they thought they were gonna oh, yeah. expose washington dc for being oh. in child trafficking that seems so weird dude. i know i don't think it's real um the singer from we came as romans died on saturday I don't know it's a different is. band um it's a uh I don't know what I'd call it, but they had a singer and a screamer. And the singer, the really good singer, died. Like 28. He's really, really young. Yeah. Really, really lame. Um, Yeah, but the whole McCain thing, like I remember he was at a bar and they started like running like memoirs of his, less of him. Mm-hmm. Like when they found him after being captured. I don't know how long he was captured though. Well, that's the I whole think... thing was like he cuts his arms above this uh-huh. because he was in like a hut for so long and he couldn't like his bones like use together or some shit. Yeah, he said they asked him how he wants to be remembered. He's just like that. I served my country. So mm-hmm. I served my country and hopefully it says I think he said something, you know, he was like a, or something. He was like an offshoot of Reagan yeah. because I look at Reagan as like the last true Republican president. The last true conservative room president. I see him more as like the first new wave Republican. Really? I think I see him as the last old one because he was super duper conservative. Like if you look up the Reagan era, that's the stuff that started. Um, he, the he his wife is credited with starting the peace era. Oh, really? Yeah. The the political correctness era because she went after MTV. First, she was the first person to go after MTV. Mm -hmm. So, like that, and then his whole motto of like shoot first, ask questions later was kind of that was kind of him. Well, he was an actor, he was an actor, but he like a real life cowboy, I think. Like, he was like the thing with, with, um, he took down the Berlin Wall, yeah, and that was like people thought that would never happen. He just went and did it. That was a big event. There was people dancing and singing in the streets and uh, throwing candy at you and Mm -hmm. um, people crying for freedom. And David Hasselhoff was dancing on the chunk of wall that they brought down. Remember that? (laughs) Oh, you can watch all of this on YouTube, brother, dude. It's it's, go on there and Hasselhoff is singing because it's Germany Mm -hmm. and everybody loves him in Germany. So. Yeah, the, 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 uh, McCain died. Um, went on with Trump. He wouldn't raise or he wouldn't lower the flag for a little bit, or he wouldn't give like an official white in, in response to the death. It really? Was, he had so a McCain? weird. He had a weird response. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. It's just I he 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 something on Twitter. Yeah, he said something on Twitter was like his response, and now I think he, they're gonna lower it because the veterans certain veteran organization kind of came at him and said like you need to do this like this don't mess around with this like so um, he decided to lower the leg till the funeral i guess i think trump is criticism over mccain death john mccain trump is continuing his feud with john mccain even after mccain's death what yeah what the hell 
Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know yeah. how to define that. <sighs> it's high school. Yeah, it's a bit, it's high school take that level of just a very low level of relationship. Yeah, and respect. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. That was messed up. There's Lauren and Jake. I went to him on back in like February and I finally got to see him DJ at Slim's the other night. It was really cool. Oh, cool. It's cool too. I actually enjoyed it. Like, I'm not a big fan of EDM, but I actually enjoyed it. And then there's Lauren. She's I got a tune. I got a tune in your ukulele, so I got to do that now. It'd be like, it's four strings. That's <laughs> yeah, but like with a ukulele, like, aren't the strings plastic? A lot of times they're like nylon or something. Yeah, it's something really delicate. Like, I'd be so afraid. I, I've snapped guitar strings before, like, while tuning them. What's up, Jake? Um, I've snapped guitar strings while tuning them. And, like, the nightmare is, like, when you when you just playing and it breaks, that's not a big deal because it kind of just frays out and just goes like that uh -huh. slowly. But when you're tuning it, um, if you're tuning it wrong or, like, you're just kind of messing up with it, uh, it just and it Go. like it like la it can lash you across the face and shit or get mm -hmm. in your okay, I haven't had that happen. dude. Oh, I was thinking about I've had it face before. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember I was doing um a guitar or no, I was trying to tune it once and it wouldn't work or no, my testing up. I remember you didn't like metal like uh, I'm more open to it now than i used to be but i'm still trying to like broaden my horizon when it comes to music but like the edm stuff is just like i respect it i think it needs talent to produce it i just personally i just can't get into it i'm gonna move this so people can see your face i guess i could all right good yeah. the, I like the slower like the chill step the whatever. faram I'm night sure what that is the Faram Knight is just in the way now too, or whatever his name is. The <laughs> Fer Faram Knight from not Faram Knight. I think the other one was cooler, but it just was too spread, spread out. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, what did you say now? EDM. I like the chill stuff. Chill stuff is that a real? There's thing? one time a long time ago, uh, Jen saw Dad sick down in Milwaukee. Date sick. I don't know how to say it. I don't know either. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. But I see him. Oh, he's still in the scene. That's real cool. Is that is he famous or I think so. Yeah. I didn't really follow it after 2012. That like was back when stuff. it was only called dubstep. Yeah. Now there's like, like trap. All the yeah, I remember that. I, what is a trap queen? Is that something totally different? Should I look it up? I guess. I need I need a producer like young Jamie. Young Jamie, look this up, please. You should just where is young Jamie? Where is he? Well, it's a song by Fetty Wap. I don't know who that is. Mary Trap Queen. A bomb ass female. Baddest female. She is loyal to her friends and lives for her family and gives no fucks to bitter petties. She also <laughs> enjoys listening to trap music. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Urban Nation. <laughs> a girl who is dumb enough to risk her life guarding a trap house or dealing boyfriend that doesn't give a fuck. Oh, right. Always, the, <laughs> the, the, the top two definitions are always miles apart. <laughs> Woody. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Music. What? Music. I don't like music. I got a nice guitar now. I can just tune. I just got to turn the thing on. So nice. he's actually not famous. There's a story there. Okay. Oh, that's right. You were tuning a you. Um, I was always I was always be afraid to snap the strings on the ukulele because they're just like plasticky. I've played you before. It's fun, but like I feel like it's a great like that's if anyone's gonna start an instrument that or a string, don't start with a guitar. Like a lot of kids don't want to learn the guitar, but their hands not big enough, so you got to buy like a smaller guitar. It's just like. The, youth, the smallest thing is only four strings, so making all the chords are a lot easier. Mm, so as okay. far as like teaching music, I feel like ukulele. The ukulele lessons at the library down in the Idea Studio. Really? Mm -hmm. Have you ever? Shout out to that. Um, if you, the thing with their hands being too small, I've actually heard that um, there's a girl that I used to follow on YouTube that was really really good at the guitar and she would like just sh she just shred and she would do it so chill and she like didn't care 
And like in an interview, she said that the reason she's so good at soloing is because when she first started, she couldn't make the chords uh-huh. because she had tiny, tiny hands. Oh, interesting. And uh, she was like, okay, I'm going to go higher up on the neck where all the notes are closer. And now she's just like, Doo! and um, they, of the bumblebee. yes. <laughs> um, and then, uh, then there's another, I saw this little Asian kid on Ellen DeGeneres, like a couple of years back and he just shredded out crazy train, which has an awesome solo in it. One of those fucking Randy road solos that he's known for. Mm-hmm. And, um, he just absolutely just, just it because his hands are so small. So he can like move faster and his fingers don't get in the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, our masters, they don't have that issue. Like they'll do everything because they've done it so long. But this kid was like three. That's I've seen some of those videos. You got a kid like re- playing the guitar or doing the drums, and they're just like, "Whoa!" Like that's better than we know. And none of them are white. Okay, mm, <laughs> think about it, man. Think about it. Oh, they—that's all they do. They practice violin or whatever for twelve hours a day. They're good at it. <laughs> Have he, you seen those videos of, like North Korean? Uh, that are just like on stage and they're all just like yeah scared eyed like oh don't miss yeah a note, don't yep. miss a note <laughs> turn to the side like, the side. a gun action just working <laughs> <laughs> like just it's not there it's just on a sound thing so like someone just pushes a button when they screw up and they're just like <laughs> just they just go rigid all of a sudden the floor <laughs> under pops out whoa <laughs> jesus it's like a game show where there's and the other guy starts playing fast. Like, oh, <laughs> me next. Oh God. Uh, well, if you think about it, it's like that they still discipline their kids over there. That doesn't exist. The culture's very different. Exist here anymore. Yeah, they're very on both, you know, like what are you gonna do? Like where are you going? Like practice, practice, practice. I mean, it's built into their culture and it reflects. It's been their culture for like a thousand years. That was one of the Joe Rogans they were talking about. Um how Asians just do real with yeah. SAT scores. Well, that's because their parents drill it into them. That's mm-hmm. good. That's good. You hand your... Like tiger moms, I think they're called. Whoa. Tiger moms. Well, I said no racial slurs, dude. <laughs> I don't think it's a racial slur. That... I think it's just a definite for like moms that are just like... I'm going to have to ask you to... I'm sorry. I'm going to have to... <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. That'd be like... <laughs> There's a comedian like you call them by the the China like the racial slurs for these people like their the restaurants are like sound like slurs like all oh, these fucking lucky pandas over here these goddamn rice <laughs> there's like this fucking group of writing standing over there and oh, everyone just left um <laughs> but uh I was I th- they beat that shit into their kids. And it's good. You should because all our all our parents do, and I was parents probably watching. But all you do is fucking hand your kids a pad and shove them in the corner, and they're shut up for twenty three hours. I do. I've seen it. They hand their kids a Kindle and just and they could release. be they could be crying from hunger, crying from loneliness or sadness, crying from pain. That neutral out. And how I I'm not a parent, so I'm sure like. Even like the worst day ever, you had your kid your phone and then it's just done. What a relief. Yeah, I don't think our society hasn't learned the etiquette to be able to respond to some of the problems that we've developed now. Like, mm. I, I just the other day, I seen like that was probably two. I mean, it had been like this tall, you know? He's just around with the phone. Like, it was mom's phone. It was obviously mom's phone, yeah. but like he had some picture that he had taken at some funny filter. So he's going around and showing everybody and he's so like, or with their phones were just like thrown in or sorry but like it's like a, it's a child and he's just so comfortable with how to hand fuck you hand somebody an astrolab do you know what that is i have no idea what that is it's a thing that the muslims invented to uh tell the position of the stars oh. they haven't used it in a thousand years yeah it's a I know disc. What you're about. It's yeah. a disc. It's like multiple in it. discs. Yep. Yes, and, and you gotta hold got... it up to the horizon. Yes, give that to anybody in the world, and they'll be. That is a crazy piece of technology. I think they came up with that like somewhere between like eight hundred mm-hmm. and fifteen hundred eighty. Well, the Muslims were soup. They it was a silk road. They, they had to navigate. So, the... They were so into astrology back then. Or astronomy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they really advanced the field. Mm-hmm. And um. 
Well, uh, Galileo made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You were you just watching that one. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're just gonna already predict uh, what I'm gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. But um, I'm oh, around God. every corner. <laughs> I'm everywhere and nowhere. That is the same thing. That's well. You've seen um. Is that from where, Fight Club? Yeah, that's, no, that's from The Usual Suspects about Kaiser. That's I showed like you that the, movie, but you slept through it. It was a slow movie. No, it's not. But um, I that's also the album title of Thrice's last album. To be everywhere is to be nowhere. I think it's called. Yeah. Well, there's a video where this Australian guy's name's Ozzy Man reviews, and he will just watch a video and comment on his in his native tongue, and he'll just be like. There's a rabbit running from two greyhounds, and the case lasts like a good two minutes, and the rabbit ends up getting away at the end, but it's so close. And there's like a part where like the rabbit's in the air and jumps on the dog's face and kicks it and then runs. Uh, the guy goes nuts and goes, the rabbit's going, oh, I'm everywhere. I am nowhere. I am Carlos and Sose. I'm fucking dirt. <laughs> <He's just> like, <laughs> and I'm like, like it's, it's so funny. I'm going to have to show that before we leave. Like, because he's he's darting just back and forth and like losing these dogs and they're greyhounds. They're bred to run. And he goes, mm-hmm. oh, I am nowhere. I'm Kaiser Soze. I'm Tyler Durden. I think the author he and um Joe Rogan. That was a pretty interesting one. Of Fight Club. The author I can't think of his name, but the author of he's Fight Club. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Chuck Palahniuk. Yeah, I just actually I was wondering what. Yeah, there's a couple that I skipped. And one of them. Yeah. I've, like I said, like a lot of them I watch with like the clips with 15 minute like sections. I think I watched a few of those. Mm-hmm. I was talking about writing the book and how that was, you know, there's Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and all these like female camaraderie books, but there were no male camaraderie books. And that's Fight Club was a really good release subject that was otherwise maybe not taboo, but just not spoken about a lot. So like that book at the time he was talking about like how he got lucky with the timing of that book coming out because he was filling a void. Well, yeah, other than like, as far as books, I can't think of like male camaraderie ones, but like co- male camaraderie movies and bo- shows, like I guess The Hangover is a really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the show Entourage is really good. I love that yeah, show. I really, that. I really, it's, it makes you feel like you can do anything. Like there's guys out of like a shit neighborhood in Queens and all they're doing is just riding their friends' coats. I feel like that's where like a lot of the popularity from the office even came from because like you show like this off like a lot of these co-workers they're not friends but you see as the seasons go on people are mm. really intertwined in the camaraderie that goes on in an office space that's where the awkward comedy comes from I guess I was thinking about um going to work in an office like that like, he kind of made what, what would they what would they make an hour 12 commission 12 uh, plus commission yeah, I don't know. Ten an hour plus commission. Uh, well, sales got paid on commission, and then counting quality control, and um, Creed was no, not Creed. Creed was in <laughs> Creed, such a nut. Creed was uh, qual head of quality, and then Merritt is his second. Um, uh, there was accounting, which was um, damn, why can't I think of it? Counting, quality control, and then I I can't I don't know I can't think of it. Oh, uh, human resource. And then there's management. I and think there's one more <laughs> security. Oh yeah, Dwight. Dwight was security. Oh, I thought that was that guy at the front door. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he just died. Oh, there's he a... died recently. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Damn it, I'm hungry. A little hungry too. I know. Did you eat? Yeah, they catered at work, so that was nice. Gosh, what was it? It was a company. We could. Uh, you probably don't want to eat Taco Bell, do you? No, it's McDonald's. No, okay. But I have stuff McDonald's here. Is all right. I have like we could eat fish. I have <laughs> fish here. I don't know. Like I'm actually not feeling the greatest because I haven't eaten since breakfast. So yeah. I might cut this early. Not like I might cut it a little early. Um. But yeah, um, El Camaraderie, like, it, that's just, that show was like, uh, I think it was anti-camaraderie. Hear me out. 
Jim, they didn't feel like anybody was friends in that show. No one. Jim and Pam were like paired off, kind of acted like they were better than everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, Dwight and Jim became friends in the second to last episode when he got his promotion. What if anti camaraderie is camaraderie? It's not um, because they were workplace friends. So that, like as soon as they left, they didn't give a fuck about each other. The person who cared about all of them was Michael, and Michael like brought the whole office together. Yeah, like that was it. Left, it fell apart. Andy tried and failed. Yeah, Andy did try. He took them to that Gettysburg Memorial, and then he asked Jim out. He was the only person to yell at Jim, like, for who he was. He's like, oh, you, Jim, you cause a disease in this office, and it's called empathy and sarcasm, and you do, all you do is make fun of people for liking what they like. And I, he's like, I don't like you for that. Oh, wow. Stri there's a, I remember the scene, and he goes after Daryl, too. The big dude. Uh -huh. He goes after Daryl and Jim at the same time by him. Oh, wow. And Jim goes... <sighs> And he goes, if you think I don't care, look at what I'm fucking wearing. And he's wearing like a pink hat that said something. And like, he kind of got upset, but like, he told Andy, like you, you don't have to prove anything. But like, it was just, I respected Andy for the bad. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta watch that again. No, like don't. I said, I, fin I just finished Brooklyn Nine-Nine, so I think I'm gonna start that one over. Finished. Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Or are you gonna watch The Office again? Oh, yeah. Probably Brooklyn. I, as soon as the last episode ended, I wanted to watch start over at the beginning. That's I don't know why, why is that. Just that good. I feel like a lot of people do that. I like Parks and Rec, and I go to bed every night just watching Parks and Rec. I, like, I that's love like the fall asleep show. Yeah, yeah. I it used to um Archer for me. I used to fall to Archer. Yeah, and then it was watch Bob's that. Burgers. Bob's Burgers. I've watched a lot of those. Or no, it was Bob, and then now it's uh. Not, then it was Archer, and now it's um, F is for Family. I never got into Oh, one. please watch it. It's so good. It's placed in the 70s, and it's a cartoon. Bill Burr does the lead voice. Oh, really? it's his whole show. He wrote it. He writes okay, it. Okay, now I do have to watch it. the show. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do like Bill Burr. Love Bill Burr. No many people left. That's okay. I don't do this for them. I hate people. <laughs> no, it's the best. Uh, When you only got, you know, 10 views, it's like, that's... That's what made the internet so at first place is because it was so authentic and people are just liking it because they want to. Now we have all this quantifying and all this like, oh, how many likes did you get? How many views did you get? And like, that's how you rate things. But like the best parts of sometimes it's like when you find that video that only has 50 views on it. No, I agree. Um, the, like, what are you saying? Like the, the algorithm, unedited. the algorithm, all of it, like Gary V talks about the algorithm all the time. He's saying that everyone thinks there's like there's an algorithm behind um getting famous on YouTube. Like you have to break the algorithm. No, he just says it's just doing what you love. Like you have to like be happy. That has to be you happy. You're not doing it for the for the money. You're doing it just because doing it. Yeah, no, I, that that's true. But I'm saying like there's a lot of people that come up to him at conferences. And how do I get past the algorithm? And it's like there isn't one. You, well, there is. He thinks there might be or there isn't or something, but like you're starting to hurt. Yeah, I keep having to and shift it all. Mine is too. I do it like one, one each. If it's pointing at the camera, they think I'm still professional. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's an algorithm that like it points out if it works, it looks for certain things in the uh, video mathematically uh -huh. it and away from what you talk about and like keywords and or like uh hot whatever it's called or like um buzzwords and like like it, it depends on what it is like trump hillary bernie you know stuff that's in the news russia election tampering uh -huh. and uh whatever oh, and um, red flag this is yep take it <laughs> <laughs> static um uh if it looks for those words or hot words and then if it hears that it will like it will show up more in the feed people mm -hmm. even if you didn't search for it the weirdest thing and they change the algorithm depending on what's hot at the time i was at work in uh one of the customers customers graham and i'm like oh graham that's a cool name and i'm gonna one of my co-workers like oh yeah that would be a cool name and um 
then all of a sudden the next day on my YouTube thread, it suggests uh, a speaker person named Graham Hancock to listen to like five, six years ago, but I haven't listened to him in like a while. I don't think he's been doing anything, but all of a sudden he, I recommended videos. <laughs> I'm like, how, like what coincidence are like that coming up like the day after? Yeah, after? no, I, I agree. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just like, cause it's a coincidence. Your brain's like, but dude, I always use those things on Facebook, but I didn't think YouTube would do it. It's everywhere now. It's going to happen. It's everywhere. Um, this is the worst one I've ever had. Um, I had, uh, I had a really, really, uh, really bad experience once of, um, I was at my work and, uh, I left my phone at my workstation. So I have no phone in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I was walking around and I found a buddy and we just chatted for like five minutes. He does not own a smartphone. He had no phone in his pocket. And I was talking about buying a newsy cap. You know what All that right. is? A newsy cap. Some it's like of... what they wear way, way, way back in the day. It says extra, extra all about. Oh, it. okay. Hold on to the paper and like sell papers on the center. Okay. Um, and I was just going to jolt that. I was like, oh, I want to buy one of those. They kind of look kind of, like kind of funny. And I want to try to. A day later on my laptop. It showed up. I had to buy one. Oh. <sighs> And my, it didn't hear my, my, like my phone is not a computer in any way. Uh -huh. So from it, for it to jump to my phone from my computer, a big stretch, uh -huh. but it didn't, wasn't heard by my phone. So what the fuck? <laughs> oh, so, so nothing was listening to you? Nothing. Why would it suggest to buy something like that? I don't know. It heard me through something else. <laughs> it's always listening. I told you, dude. Yeah. Um, you have to accept it, I guess. At this point. Yeah, I was gonna say privacy isn't isn't around anymore. I'm fine with it though. Like I'm I'm honestly fine with it. I had a friend once that I wanted to have over, but when he found a smart TV, he said, "I'm never coming into your apartment." Oh yeah, I, I remember. I, well, remember Edward Snowden? Yeah. Like one of the leaks that they had was that there was a lot of TVs that like have these microphones in them, like a DV, DVD players that came with a mic and like. I think it was, I remember C, I think had some uh, device that they like showed patent for it. Like this is a patent that's for like advertising purposes. So it can collect information, but you never subscribe to it. Or I really leaked article about like how the NSA was actually like, like um, spy devices, like in technology, like in computers and phones and stuff like that. It's on barges crossing the Pacific ocean, like a really good, time frame where there's no interaction to be able to like open up these things put in the device before it's ever powered on in the first place you take a piece of technology and power it on for the first time apparently it like scans the system and if it's already a part of the system it never realized technology was ever added it just is like a pit yeah I'm like what like i don't so like i don't even know if i believe that i just know that was an article that I read from the leaks so oh, jesus is that guy dead yet no snowden no, he's not sure. Jeez. I don't know. I've just accepted it at the end. Yeah, it's which I is think really depressing. <laughs> it's depressing, but like, what are you gonna do about? It? Like, it's just gonna have to be something you have to live with. Yeah, big brother is yeah. so always gonna be there. So, um, anyways, uh, I know what I want to talk about, but I'm not sure it's the right time. Uh -huh, whatever and then stay up it's just a little more versatile so i want to start doing like 5k walks or runs or whatever the fuck they are and um like every i've brought that up to other people and they like kind of i don't know just mocked me about it there's never been a thing that i've won that you've mocked me for i don't think maybe in high school i don't know but that was back we were different people long, back then yeah we were different people back then, but like always, like, I don't want to say like cheered me on and some. Well, I don't know why anybody would want to be negative. Kind of hippie-ish, but you all cheered me on about that and I always appreciated it. Yeah. I know, see, it doesn't, it sounds like foreign to you. Like, why would you not do that? Well, it's foreign to me when people think about stuff like there's like a, you know, like 
bring something new. A lot of times people are just like, uh, you know, like once you're out of school, Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about that. Like, I got to learn shit. Yeah. Uh. They're not excited about it. You got to be excited. Like, what's the point of like getting up in the morning excited about something? I think that's a personal choice, though. Like, you have to put, force yourself to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, not many people have, John. You know that. Like, to, to get excited about something that's, like, challenging. Like, not just, you know, Joe Rogan's philosophy says I want to do something I suck at so I can get better. I can watch myself yeah, get good. better. Good feel to feel good learn. overcoming obstacles. Mm -hmm. I have told people that especially younger people, they're like, fuck that. They're like, no, fuck you. That's hard. Fuck. Oh, I don't. It's well, just... you was talking about force, you know, like you, it's not the path of least resistance. It's the path of resistance. So it's, it doesn't come easy. It doesn't come natural. You have to be, I guess, like you got to make it so you don't just get swept up in whatever everybody else is doing. I don't know. It will. People are just. I don't want to use the word too casual, but people are just too casual now. They don't. I don't think people know what they really want. I think that's the problem. I think people don't. I try to ask people, and I'm just so surprised at my, the the lack of the answer. Like, what would you do if you're not at this job, whatever it is? Like, like obviously working retail or, you know, where I am or where you are. Like, if you, like, chose or if you were, like, a kid thinking about what you want to do when you grow up is, like, the kind of the question you wouldn't pick, you know, but like, what if you didn't have to do this and you could do what you really love to do? Like, what would that be? And a lot of people be like, well, I want to do this job. I'm like, well, what if this job didn't exist? Like, what would you do otherwise? Like, I don't know. I didn't think of like, well, like, what do you do aspire to? Like your mission? What's your vision? What's your purpose? Like what change do you want to see in the world? Like what impact do you want to have? Because that's like the only real thing that you can do and change something. So like, do you want to, I don't know, like kids eat that answer up. They ever, I want to be a inventor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an athlete. I want to be an artist. I want to be, do something like, and I think it just gets knocked out of you. How do you, disenfranchise is a real problem. On, how do you hold on to that though? when you know the real world, because these kids don't know the real world. Dude, I'll be honest with you. It was when I was young, I thought my parents had just because they were bored. I didn't know we had bills. I'm five years old and I'm like, I'm not going to even have a job when I get home. I'm just going to get home. Sure. And like, I'm like, why? I would scream at my mom. I remember like, why do you have to go to work? I don't want you to leave. I miss you. Like, and they, they never explained it to us. Like, shut up. I have to go to work. And like, that's, they're running late. They have to, mm -hmm. but like, it, it gets beat naughty because it needs to naughty. This is not, that's not how the world works, but I get what you're saying. Like how it's really tough to hold on to the, optimism of being a kid and the the end kid and then all of a sudden just like have that when you're trying to work 40 per week mm -hmm. it's so hard i don't expect anybody to do that but like you get a few people every now and then they break out of that and follow their dreams but most of the time it's just like i'm trapped in what i've got you know yeah. this, this whole thing that i'm doing right here this is just something i wanted to do and yeah, it's not, you know, I'm not famous from it, but like, I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to do this because I enjoy it. And I'm just, it, I never thought I was a kid, but like, I'm doing this now. And like, no, I don't... this is good enough. This is good enough for me. This isn't changing the world, but I mean, you but saw, it's something meaningful, look at all right? these people that can't, mm -hmm. I can't scroll from here. But I'd show you otherwise. It's meaningful. There's like, I mean, there's like 100 people doing just watching now. And mm -hmm. then they get watched later too. Mm -hmm. So like that's my change. I mean, well, it's look what you're changing. Radical, like, what is a podcast? What are you doing on a podcast? Like you're kind of just like you're putting ideas out there, right? And the whole point of that is so that other people can take those ideas and like the narration, then they make them think of something. So then they say something different. And then somebody hears, oh, that's a really good idea. And then like this, this word of mouth kind of keeps spreading, you know, but like that's what it's what everybody's doing is trying to long form entertainment but like you know having conversations i, mean, I guess it's a, a lot of different things you can tune in to like learn something you can turn into a skate turn tune in because you know you like you're part, part of, of something it, yeah. yeah i that i got this idea for doing this actually I, like the earliest idea i had was in 2014 
I mm. thought of um it was called comedians in cars getting coffee and I saw it and I'm like I want to do that yeah I want to like drive around and just have conversations with people and then like I actually did one I never recorded it but I jokingly around joking around did one Josh Bry <laughs> and uh that's 2014 I remember uh-huh. doing that it was a lot of fun and I remember um telling him about it and I was like no one acting weird you were like really feel like you were asking me questions from like a sheet of pitch and i'm like we're just eating lunch at like backyard bar and grill and what, what are you doing uh-huh. um and then uh i started watching the joe rogan podcast thanks to you and um yeah. we're like a key element in getting this together so you, hey, just, you say one thing oh baby that would be awesome do it well, I mean, uh, yeah, Johanna, I'm, I mean, I agree Seinfeld does it in a Porsche. I don't have a Porsche. Um, but you uh, start just doing it regularly. That's the, what? that's the main the, thing. All the pocket. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I, I don't do it enough. I'm having one later this week. Um, that gym guy, he's gonna, he's gonna do it on this week. Um, I'm going to start coming on once a month. Does you to have to find other people? To stop it becoming the John and Mitch show, or the Mitch and John show. That's pretty funny. I like that <laughs> idea, dude. Because then you're like, on. "Oh man, I got to get other people you, before John comes back." <laughs> you can come on. You can come on as you want, dude. I've had a uh, two repeat guests, but um, I uh, yeah, I, I I'm not I'm not gonna do it in a car, but like I then like get like GoPros year? and stick them all over oh, the place. Fuck that. <laughs> I, yeah, it does, but I'm not gonna do it. Um, but um the the next form i had the next idea i had was uh, i was on Oregon podcast and i didn't have any of this stuff but then all of a sudden i'm like, well i have great just go to walmart and get some big you no know, spice <laughs> drive around in a couple of big wheels well have you ever Fine. watched hot ones hot is ones that, is like is that like shoot of um is that where that got canceled and then they brought it back i don't think so it's like Top I, gear? Has, I don't Okay, sorry. It's like he has a bunch of hot sauces and he's doing like, it's yeah. it's like a very, it's not a podcast. It's okay. like a 15 minute interview or something. Yeah. And he just goes like, all right, we're starting and he says how hot each one is and then like asks us a question. It's very like well researched. He's asking good questions. You're like learning about like whoever it is. Like I remember Natalie Portman one was really cool. Ooh. She's super smart. Yeah, she she like has a master's in something. At she Harvard. Harvard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's smart. Um, yeah, I... I wanted to watch like those, fit, and I never see them. figure out something, like, you know, like you're sitting it's in like fitness, these. Fitness, isn't it? I don't know if it's fitness, but I know the, the gimmick or the thing that the shtick that they're doing is they're just in like uh, ice tubs. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and that's oh, it. And then just asking that. questions. And... My, uh, my second form of like getting to this was um, I thought uh, our comp, like me and a bunch of my friends, I was in this wedding in last October, and I'm like, we have freaking hilarious conversations. Uh-huh. I love having like we. I think people would enjoy. Will laugh at us talking, and it wasn't just a bunch of like lame dick jokes, even though those were in there. Uh-huh. Um, so I started recording them, and uh, I had my friends record them and everything. And uh, I was like, well, like I don't know how to get these onto the computer, get those out there. So like, one of my friends got a hold of me and was like why don't you come on my podcast like you have a podcast he goes not yet but i'm gonna set it all up Mm -hmm. and we set it all up and we started doing it and i'm like all right this is it this is what we're doing we're doing this podcast now and uh that's last june i want to say and uh yeah i've been doing it ever since then and i took it solo in january well what so what's the next step I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm not going to go anywhere else. Are you going to upgrade? Uh, yeah. Get I'm going to get my, I, I mean, this stuff isn't even mine. I buy all this stuff. You should do like, if you're like doing it regularly, you could start like, have you heard of Patreon? No. Yes, I have, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking money for this. No, I don't, you don't believe force in anybody. It. You just no. go put the option out. Maybe, maybe someday. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks for like encouraging me in everything I've ever done. Yeah. Everything everything and um i'm gonna start encouraging you because of a lot of stuff that you was like i'm like be fucking hippie <laughs> i'm sorry about that dude i feel really bad about it keeps my dreams in check yeah i mean don't forget to focus on real life that's that's all i was only thing i was trying to get by to you is like 
don't forget to focus on real life. But uh, anyways, I'm going to cut it here because uh, I need to eat something and I feel terrible. I haven't eaten in like 14 hours, so I'm a little, uh, um, I can make something. So is that you want to say? I know it's kind of putting you on the spot, but nothing other than cog in the wheel. I complained to management, but nobody will listen. Really dark. What? (laughs) You complained at work? I would complain, but nobody will listen. And that's for next time. (laughs) Uh, It's my favorite quote from a movie. I'm not going to say what. Okay. You don't have to say it off air when we close out everything. All All right. right. Um, Yeah, this is a short, but I could have planned it out better. I slept too late. I fucked up on that. But um, I'm going to have you back on in a month anyway. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye, everybody. You got to like awkwardly walk over. (laughs) Though I always do. Yeah. (laughs) Usually I just like mouse over it, but I get to walk over there. All right. Thanks for uh, tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, You're down to zero by now. So uh, we've held some attention. Yeah. Good job on that. Um, anyways, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, and as always, uh, devil horns. Um, <laughs> Satan. As always, uh, g- uh, go talk to a person, have a conversation with their face. I always say that at the end of every one. Go pretty face to face. Facey face. Facey face. Facey face. Face face. <laughs> Bye. Now I get to walk over to. See you. So it got real dark at the end. Oh, why did I want to go there?